Hi, Louise. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Oh, you look like you're in a lovely little cabin out there. This was my COVID winter project. I built a studio in my backyard. Sweet. Awesome. With a, so the, this is my little loft space mm -hmm. and it's not totally finished, but my, so the loft space is my office uh -huh. and then the bottom space is my art studio. Oh, amazing. So yeah. it's like a, a tree house, like a double decker tree house. Yeah. Oh, I love I mean, it. It's not in the tree, but it's, it feels like it's in the tree. It looks like a tree house. <laughs> It an does. Awesome project. Yeah. So where are you? Uh, where are you? I am currently in Cochrane, Alberta. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. Where are you? Penticton. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. So are you using breakout rooms today? Do you think, Louise? We'll see where things go. I'd like to, but um, okay. it'll, it'll depend a little bit on what direction the, the workshop takes. Sure. Um, so I'll be keeping an eye on the time to make sure that we have enough time if we do go into the breakout room. Okay. And if so, would you like some help with that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to make you co-host right now. And hi, okay. Lindsay. And I'd like to just share, just check that my sound is working, if I can share my desktop. Mm-hmm. You know about those couple little buttons to click? Yeah. Remarkable how frequently I forget about those little buttons. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, so just to make sure you can hear the sound. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so we should be good. Excellent. I used to be a band teacher, so I'm just like oh. really excited about this. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see uh, who all the people are. I've looked at the, the list of attendees, but I mean, what people do is so varied. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, seeing that, meeting people. Um, I'm going to put in the chat right now our shared document and then I can just take the keep uh, people won't see it if they come in after but I can share it again because I'll have the link right there okay great what else do we need to do here So we have about 45 minutes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just looking at my list of things I need to do, see if I'm forgetting anything. Yeah, I should do the same actually. I set everything up, but uh, mm -hmm. there's always some little thing that kind of slips by the wayside. And I'll keep an eye on the chat too. And if there's something I, that kind of, I know it's sometimes hard to watch that and present at the same time. So that'd be fantastic. It's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of rotten at multitasking. So I really appreciate oh, that. Yeah. And trying to share your screen and uh, yeah, watch the chat. Yeah, but there's, yeah. Oftentimes there's a question in the chat that gets lost. Yeah. So I'll pipe up if that happens. But we're keep, trying to keep these sessions pretty um, relaxed and conversational. So hopefully if somebody has a question, they're also comfortable just putting on their mic and asking it. For sure. If that's well, okay with you. At the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm 
Hi, Geneva and Lindsay, if you're there, let us know where we're talking to you from. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I uh, live in Comox on Vancouver Island. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Lindsay. I love There's Comox. A lot of people around on uh, Vancouver Island. It's kind of interesting. Do you teach um, primarily online, Lindsay? Um, we have a bit of a blended school, but mostly my students are working from home and my sort of uh, intermediate and high school students are online and the primary students are usually more like in workbooks and stuff like that. And so you're teaching the whole gamut. So. Yeah, our school does K to 12 and every teacher teaches every grade, every subject. And we have family groupings. So uh, if a whole family comes to us, they have one teacher. Okay, interesting. So that's gotta be multi-age classrooms in that case. Yeah, uh, but it's, they're working from home. So it's not really, <laughs> yes. It's kind of always multi-age. <laughs> yeah, yeah home. exactly. <laughs> but our, um, our activities that we have for in-person activities are usually grouped by age. So K to three, um, four to seven and eight to 12. Okay, that's cool. I have to say the number of, um, you know, grandparents I've had online with their grandchildren has been pretty cool. So it's, it may be K to three, but it's also some grandparent who's uh, <laughs> probably a retired teacher or something like that and super enthusiastic about doing stuff. Yeah, we just did a session from the waste management, like the dump, <laughs> and the parents stayed and listened, and most of the kids played on the playground. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I've been told that um, from parents that they're learning a lot online this year. <laughs> you know, both about the subject material, but also about, you know, the craft of teaching. I have quite a lot of people saying that they... Uh, that they're they have a renewed respect for teachers so i think that's quite a positive thing that's coming out of this year yeah for sure mm -hmm. geneva you might be taking a little snack break but if you're there where are you talk to us from oh hello hi yes i uh, just had to go get water for my kettle <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in Vanderhoof. I uh, I'm with Ebus up here in Vanderhoof, so I'm fully online. Um, yeah. <laughs> and what grades do you teach? I do grades four to six. Okay, and all subjects. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, and I'm not at all musical. I mean, <laughs> so but my kids love music and love playing with videos and sound and things like that. So I thought this would be. Fun. <laughs> Perfect. That's all you got to do is have fun with it. We also have Cheryl and Kirsten and Pam. Maybe as we're starting to have people come in, it would be great for me if uh, if you could just type into the chat uh, what grade you work with and whether or not you are a generalist or a specialist. Um, if you do have instruments in your room, it also helps me to know what instruments you have available to you. It's really pretty wide ranging. Four to six all subjects fully online. Thanks, Geneva. I think there may be some people going for more tea. It's one of the great <laughs> things about online things. <laughs> yes, you're there, but you might be doing other things. Uh -huh. Like, I have to say, I was eating my breakfast during the keynote this morning, which was like just such a lovely thing to be able to do. For sure. So we have Pam who teaches kindergarten fully online. Mm. I'm just curious, Pam, how many hours a day would you say the children are online? Maybe still going for some tea. 
so Pam, when you were teaching band, what kind of things were you doing? Um, well, I taught middle school primarily band and, and choir. Okay. And um, so I, I, I loved doing that. And I now teach um, high school languages, but I'd love to get some more um, arts and music classes going at uh, my online school and uh, other online schools too. So yeah, I, I, I'd love this conversation to, to grow and you know have more of this going on for sure. For sure, yeah. There's all kinds of resources in the um, online doc that are for music and arts. So that's a curated list that I put together for one of the school boards in Quebec. And it was specifically to help people find ways to integrate arts into their online learning. Tons and tons of resources out there. I was just wow. trying to make sure that it was, you know, not just a random Google search, but that I went through the lists and tried to find things that were most pertinent, readily accessible. And I just put in the chat there, that's the link to our shared doc for this session. So um, feel free to add to it as we're going through the session or afterwards and uh, make great use of it. Hi, Rick. Hi, Cheryl. So it's, it's 1031. Um, so I'm thinking we could kind of get moving here and our sessions are recording, are being recorded. They'll take out um, all this beginning stuff of us just chatting. Um, but we can access the recordings again later. And we're so grateful that Louise has joined us from Alberta um, to chat with us today. And we're definitely wanting these sessions um, to be um, kind of laid back and, and open. So please, you know, turn on your microphones if you have a question and um, definitely share and learn together. So Louise, over to you. Great. So I'm really excited to be here today with you. Um, I have to say, I really, I am a teaching artist myself. I am not a teacher in a classroom, but I'm a guest in schools all the time. And I love working with teachers. I love to be able to see the amazing bond that teachers have with their students and just how much you're able to accomplish it within a school. And so I use that, uh, you know, my privilege as a guest in the school system to really be able to find a way to use the skills that you've already built with your students and find a way to bring it even further. Um, I'm very well aware that I have a very different position as a teaching artist. Um, teachers in the school always have, you know, things like discipline and long-term relationships with students that I don't necessarily have. So we can really work together as a team and that's what I love about uh, coming in as a guest. Every single teacher has a different relationship with their classes, a different relationship with their students, and it's really such an amazing thing to be able to see that. Um, so I was asking a few of the people who were here earlier about uh, who you are, because um, it'll help me to be able to kind of tailor the presentation to what you need if I have a better idea of who you are. So if you haven't already put into the chat, I would actually just ask you to put into the chat what grade you teach, whether you're a generalist or a specialist, and whether or not you have instruments accessible to you. Um, so far, what I've seen is that there are a lot of people who are generalists and a pretty ra range. You know, we've got kindergarten teacher, we have elementary, we have principal who teaches, uh, all of the ages, generalist K through 12. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of people who maybe don't have a lot of training in their background. Um, if I'm mistaken in that, please correct me. I'm certainly not the only expert here. All of you have wonderful experiences to share. And I would be really um, excited if we could make this more of a dialogue so that if you have something, you're just like, this happened in my class, it was great, can I share it, that's wonderful. Or I had this challenge and I didn't know quite how to deal with it. Then we can talk about that and find solutions that will work better for all of us. So we have also uh, Rick, who's Indigenous Support for Teach, uh, who's a teacher for K through 12, that's great. Um, another generalist K through 12, fantastic. Okay, so um, how about, I'm gonna start out with a list of questions that I'd like you all to put into the chat. And one of the things I try to do when I'm coming into a Zoom room or an in-person classroom is make sure that the questions I'm posing are really pretty easy to start off with. There's no rights or wrongs, it's just whatever is going on. 
So I'd like each one of you to just look around the space that you're in and name one thing that you see in your space. So I'm going to do that. Um, great. So we have my mother's quilt in my space here, which is beautiful. She's an artist. Book, plant, hand drum, bulletin board, curtains, wood. Yes, I see that, Pam. Lots of wood. And I'd like everybody to take just, you know, 10 seconds or 15 seconds or so and just listen to what's going on in your space and type in what you hear in your space. So in my space, it's very quiet here, but I can hear the forced air. I have a plane overhead, computer humming, fan. Quiet spaces from the sounds of it, other people typing. Uh, oh, birds, nice. That's great. So we have a lot of kind of mechanical sounds. Um, and even just from those observations, I can tell that some people are alone and some people are not. So that would inform what I might ask people to do or what I might expect in terms of participation from other people because some people have other people around them, other people don't. And some lucky person gets to hear birds. That's wonderful. Now, third question for you. I'd like you to just take a, you know 30 seconds to reflect about something that you're wondering about. Like, what is it that brought you here today? So if you can just maybe go, I wonder, and fill in that sentence. That'll help me to know a bit more about who you are and what you're looking for. Okay, interesting. So lots of interesting I wonder statements. I love this I wonder question because it brings up such interesting things. So I wonder how to engage students uh, with music from a distance, how to encourage a homeschooling student with his music when he can't take lessons, how we can promote a specific song with students online, how to introduce my music to my online class so parents will enjoy and understand as much as the children. How to give my students that work from home opportunity to be creative with music if music's not part of their lives. Interesting. Great. Okay, so from there, I'm going to keep all of that in mind and I'm going to do a very short kind of presentation so that you have an idea of who I am and uh, where we're going to go with this. I will do my best to keep it short because I would like to get into the real um, nitty gritty of actually making music and sound together. So I'm quite uh, adamant about excuse me, I'm bad at multitasking, quite adamant about the need uh, to experience making music and sound and the need to experience online learning in order to be able to facilitate it well yourselves. Um, so as I said before, I'm not the only expert in this Zoom room. You all have your experiences and I would love to hear your experiences. So these are just simply what I'm going to share with you today are strategies for online learning um, and creativity in music and sound based on my own experience and based on the participatory creative music hub. Um, this hub is an online tool that has at the moment about 25 to 30 uh, projects that are all possible for you to use in your own classrooms. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit later, but I just wanted to mention that these aren't all my ideas. I'll mention who they came from, but there's more online if you want to access them. So today, uh, what I wanted to start to do was get to know you a little bit uh, by finding about a bit what you do and maybe what you need. And that was the goal of those questions that I was asking you. Because it's very different if I have a room full of band teachers or a room full of, of people who are more generalists who often are music lovers outside of their teaching practice. So I want to find a way for you to be comfortable using your skills in the best way that you can online to make sure that your kids are having a great experience. Um, so a lot of this is about knowledge sharing, how we can engage learners online, which I was hearing a lot of that in the I wonder statements, 
and what strategies are effective in facilitating specifically music creativity online, which I'm sure you all know this is a particular thing because of audio quality. Uh, Zoom, I think, is a great platform. It's my favorite of all the platforms because the audio quality is best. But there's still things that you can and can't do online um, just simply because of the, the way that the platform works. You know, with the simple idea that when I'm speaking, if somebody else makes a really loud sound, then the microphone automatically switches over to the other screen. I think we've probably all experienced that um, and had lovely experiences when, you know, students know how to use the, the mute button a little too well. Well, this is one thing that definitely is something we need to take into account when we're facilitating music and sound. And um, I also would like to make sure this is experiential so that you have a chance to actually be a learner online so that you can put yourself in your students' shoes a little bit to better understand what, what helps for them and what may also hinder. So um, if I'm asking for feedback, I'd love to know what you enjoy and I'd also love to know what your challenges are because your students will have those same challenges at home. Um, for myself, I just want to talk a bit about my approach. As I mentioned before, I'm a teaching artist, so I come in as a guest. And uh, whether I'm in person or online or hybrid, I'm really trying to find ways to get people to connect with themselves. Um, and one thing that's particular about online is that the audio quality, like I said, is so different. Sound is vibration, vibration is physical, and we listen with our whole bodies. So when we're online, I make an extra effort to try and find a way to prioritize a sensorial experience, um, which in my opinion, a PowerPoint is not that. <laughs> so we're going to get more into a bit more of a sensorial experience to get you really anchored in your place a little bit more once I'm done with the whole PowerPoint thing. Um, the other thing that I really try to make sure that I'm doing is find a way to get the learners to connect with each other. Um, it's generally something that when they're more teenagers and if they're adept at chat, that can happen a little bit more uh, organically. Um, but sometimes with, uh, with the younger kids, you need to walk them through some of those experiences. I mean, I'm sure some of you have a lot more experience with that now that some of the online learning K through, through six has been going on all year. Um, there's certainly challenges with that, but I really do try to make sure that people aren't just connecting with me, but they're connecting with each other and with each other through the music. Um, and one thing that I always try to remind myself before I'm going into a new room is all it takes is that first step of going in and engaging. And this is a wonderful quote uh, that was from Hugh Chris Brown, who runs a very, very extensive uh, prison music program called Pros and Cons. Uh, throughout Ontario, mainly based in Kingston, um, but he has uh, done some wonderful work with, with uh, inmates and community members through community choirs and also uh, teaching some of the inmates pro music production skills. So they're writing songs that end up being about their experiences and oftentimes about whatever is the reason for the, that they are inside um, and also a way for them to give back to the community. So any sales from this program go towards um, a charitable organization that they name. And so he's, he's really quite incredible, very inspiring. And I've just always taken that idea from him of all it takes is just going in and engaging, taking that first step and having the courage to take that first step. So just to give you a little bit of a background about the resources, this is, as I said, from the Participatory Creative Music Hub. I'm the project lead for that. It's a user-based online resource. So user-based means that you can search for projects that have um, you know, inspiration and lesson plans. So if you are a high school teacher, you can go in and look under education and then check your age range. And it will show all of the projects that have been done for high school in education. So you can really go in and target what you're looking for and find out what other people have been doing. Oftentimes it's lesson plans and process and making of. The user-based part is that you can also submit your own projects. So we're hoping that this will be a growing kind of resource where if you have something that you really want to share, then you can go in and actually submit your own project yourself as well too. Um, it is uh, a little bit more wide ranging than education. And I would encourage you to go and have a look at all of the projects, not just the ones that are in education. Because some of the, actually all of the ones I think could be really, really well used uh, with a little bit of massaging in the education sector as well too. Um, so with that, let's start talking a bit about what online learning does give us. In terms of music and sound, it's a bit questionable, but oftentimes we have a quieter space than, say, an in-person classroom. So one thing, excuse me, 
that I found is a major plus is that if I'm asking people to do creative work, I can give them 10 minutes and they can go and do it. They can turn their mic off, they can turn their video off and they can go do what they're doing in their own space. If I do that in a classroom, it's cacophony. And I do it because I love it and I think it's necessary, but it's also very loud. So we can sometimes use that quiet space to our advantage, although that is questionable, right? Because that I use a sort of like listening game in order to learn what is going on on the other side of the screen. And sometimes it's not quiet at all. So it might not be appropriate for somebody to go and play their instrument really loud. They might have a sibling who's doing a test. They might have um, not great internet that makes it hard for them to actually uh, really focus on what they're doing. So that quiet space is somewhat questionable. questionable. But we can get into some listening and observation things that I find really interesting. Um, another plus for video conferencing is that it's visual. So we might as well use that. So I've used a lot of visual arts in order to uh, get people to engage with sound. Um, I've also used video as a medium and using the frame that we have here as a tool in order to really get us working, communicating with each other in a nonverbal way. Then of course, there's always the issue of what happens when everyone has their video off, as most people do now. <laughs> so let's get into the actual um, starting of exploring music and sound. So first exercise that I love is an exercise I first did uh, in a project called Sound Bites, where I was working with a school where their cafeteria was just horrifically loud and the kids were coming out with headaches. They could not concentrate after lunchtime. Um, the kids who had sensory issues were just in complete overload. So we did all kinds of listening exercises in order to get the kids just more aware of the sound that was going on. So we're gonna do a shortened version of this Unfortunately, all of these will be very shortened versions of this because <laughs> I want to give you as many tips and tools and inspiration as I possibly can that you can then go into your classrooms to try out. So uh, this exercise is surprising how long elementary school kids would do this for. And I had a high school group that was doing this for five minutes. The trick is that you are going to sit quietly in your own space. You're not going to add sound to your own space, so you're not going to be really talking but you're just going to sit quietly in your own space. We're gonna do this for a minute. I will show you the duration of the minute. When my hands get over here, that'll be when you're done. And I simply want you to listen. You might be listening and you've already heard a few sounds in your space. It might be really easy to hear the building sounds. But beyond those building sounds, what else do you hear? Are there outside sounds that you can hear? Are there inside, like body sounds that you can hear? Are there other people? So at the end of that minute, I'm then going to ask people to share what they have actually heard. So I'm just going to use my phone as a timer. We'll do this for a minute, but honestly, two to five minutes is usually good for uh, kids, depending on their circumstances and attention span. But really, longer is often better. It's great. So a minute of listening is going to start now. Okay, so that's our minute. So what I heard was again, like the furnace sound of the forced air. And I heard a bird. It's kind of interesting at the very end, there's a different kind of bird. I'm learning the birds here because I'm, I'm not currently in my own home. So it's all different species. And I also heard myself breathing and some of the sounds of my, my clothing moving on my skin. Pam, could I get you to share what you 
heard in your space? Yeah. Oh, first I want to say, I just love doing that. Oh, because I feel like I get into these deeper levels of hearing things and, and, and what's going on around me. So I, I can hear some cars going by. Um, and I can cut, I was aware of my computer fan noise again. Um, I did get to hear some birds. And then I also hear this, like, kind of the, I guess it's my, um, the blood flow in my head. I, I hear the kind of heartbeat in my, in my head somehow. Mm -hmm. so that's, cool. that's, yeah. It's interesting say that you say that you kind of get into different levels because I actually think duration is really important. I like usually only do a minimum of two minutes um, because it takes a while to settle down. And especially if somebody's really revved up for whatever reason, like it just takes a bit of time to actually really calm down enough to start to be able to listen and hear different things. Yeah, it was really a lovely grounding experience. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, that's part of the reason why I do that, actually. It's to, just to give people a chance to kind of like separate from what they were doing before. And closing your eyes is a great way to do it because it gets rid of some of the visual input and it gives people just the sense to really just focus a little bit more. Would anybody else like to share what they heard in their space? If you'd like to, you could put it in the chat. Or Rick, what would you? What are you hearing there? Uh, well, it was our lunch break. I'm in the high school building and office, and so I'm on the first floor, and we have three floors. And this time, I didn't hear birds, but I heard a lot of ruffling and muffled voices and a lot of footsteps. Cool. That's awesome. I miss those sounds. I'm like 100% online this year, <laughs> so I don't get to hear that bustle. Lovely. Thank you. Anybody else like to share? Lindsay. I'm at home and I heard a car drive by. I'm hearing a lot of birds at this season. We get a lot of bird noises. An airplane flew by and one of my dogs was licking and another dog walked on the floor. And then my fridge made a noise. Okay, you've got lots of animal company there. Yeah, two dogs, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Anybody else like to share? Okay, excellent. So we'll, we'll move on. Um, the next step of that activity, I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to actually ask you to do it in the interest of time, is that I would do exactly the same duration again, but then ask people to write or draw what they hear, as they hear it, because it's a big memory task to actually remember what you heard. But if you give them a chance to actually write or draw it, then sometimes that actually means that people hear different things. Um, not just the scratching of their pencil on paper, but other things as well. You can also get into more abstract kind of, kind of stuff. Instead of like drawing a fan, for example, you can draw what the sound of the fan looks might look like, like a translational exercise. like. If it's a fan that has like, um, you know, a very smooth sound, maybe you could do shades of gray on something. Or if there's a bit of a rattle to it, maybe it's a bit more pointy like this. And you can get into very interesting kinds of uh, exercises like that. That's really, kids get into that really quickly. Um, and they'll, they'll surprise you with what they, what they do. Um, so getting into the visuals, that is the, the drawing response part that can be really fun. And you can do that with listening to environmental sounds. And you can also do that playing specific music from uh, YouTube is actually one of the easiest ways to do it because uh, Zoom shares YouTube. It doesn't share all platforms, but it will for YouTube. Um, and you can get into drawing responses of like, this is a character piece. What would this character be about? What would the story be about? And I get everything with that. I have kids drawing like Jackson Pollock and I've had somebody do like little comic book designs of like a story from start to stop all the way through and it can be really really fun so I that is something that I think is quite commonly done in school so I don't want to get really deeply into that I'd like to go into some things that are I see a little less frequently um, the other we can thing we can do especially for learners at home is explore materials that you have around you so I'd like each one of you to pick up um, some object that you have around you it can be any object and I'd like you to take 30 seconds and I want you to find three different sounds you can make with that object. Once we're done that, I'm going to ask some people to uh, demonstrate those sounds for us. 
So it'll be a sort of a music guessing game of what kind of object you're using. Okay, so 30 seconds and you get to find three sounds out of whatever object you've got in your surroundings. Okay, we'll make that a short 30 seconds. So, Pam, I'm curious, do you have an object there? I do. You do. Okay, okay. so try not to show us your okay. object, and then we're going to guess what it is. Okay, hopefully you can hear this. You're going to have to hold it closer to your mic, closer to your computer. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, that's a, I'll, I'll make a louder one. <laughs> I've got other sounds that can make that are louder. <laughs> Here's one. Do that can again. You, can you do it multiple times? Wow, you hear that's it? a hard one. That's a really hard one. Does anybody have any ideas of what it might be? A stapler? Uh, yeah, I was thinking maybe it's like, um, a hole punch tape. Yeah, I was thinking maybe like a... Oh, do you want me to show you? Sure, yeah. Damn, you got it. It's tape. <laughs> I was trying to do this little like flicking of it at the beginning, but it's not loud enough, I guess. Okay, yeah, it can be a little soft. Does anybody else want to uh, demonstrate? So all you have to do is open your mic and we'll hear you. Geneva. Okay, so I can hold, go. hold whatever you're, right. you're using really close to your computer so we can hear. Did you hear those? Yeah, you're scraping something. <laughs> can you do it again? Yeah. Oh, they're two different. I was doing two different sounds there. Okay, it's very soft. Any ideas? Oh, yeah, I'm thinking a like notebook this? or something. A mouse, a clock. Oh. Yeah. Okay, show us what it is, Geneva. Stapler. Oh. <laughs> I think in the ridge is on the bottom and okay. clicking it. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so keep your objects close by you. Um, that is something that I've I've done like a full hour of just that music guessing game with with young kids. Like they will go on and on and on and on and on about it. It's super fun. Um, so one of the issues is is having just objects at home, right? So I wanted to share a couple of things with you about ways to use objects that you have at home, like tissue paper. So I'm going to share my screen with you. To oops. Not that screen. This woman right here, her name is Jermaine Liu, and she does a lot of really amazing play with different objects. And they're often objects that you have at home, like keys, or like tissue paper in this case, or other recycled materials. And I'll play a little bit of it for you so that you get an idea of uh, the way that her videos go. They're all really beautifully done instructional videos. Step one, create wind with your body to lift the tissue paper off the ground. Step two, play with the paper freely. Step three, 
Come to standing and toss the tissue paper. Observe the paper sculptures in the air. Step four, get into a natural tossing pulse. Let's call it heartbeat. So I think you get the idea for that. You can also do it with a partner, um, which obviously depends on the context that you're teaching in and what you need to do in order to make sure that things are sanitary. Um, but I definitely encourage you to go have a look at Jermaine's other uh, videos because they really are fantastic. Um, when it, goes, it comes to playing with objects, you can also do all kinds of instrument making. So this is a project uh, with the Care Centre, which is an adult uh, education centre. <clears throat> and this is a project that we did for uh, making adaptive instruments for the, their clients who are people with physical disabilities. So this place had all kinds of keys. So we made all kinds of keyed instruments. Um, this was a listening kind of touching kind of instrument where you could just feel everything and you played with it with eyes closed. We had sort of more rattles up here. Um, this was just simply a box that I received in the mail from a computer. It had a fabulous sound. And this was a rain stick that we made. So just a big giant tube that we filled up with all kinds of those keys and lots of other marbles and that sort of stuff. We ended up having uh, eggs as well and somebody brought in all kinds of um, David's tea cans, which were just beautiful. They all made different pitches and we arranged them in, in an order to make a kind of a xylophone. So all of these things make um, making music with people in different spaces really possible because guaranteed like people aren't going to have the same stuff at home, but everybody's probably going to have a recycle box. So if you do that kind of exercise where you start out with an object and you find different materials, then they can build their own. Um, so to give you an idea of what you can do with that, uh, let's move on to using video. Using video is just amazing with Zoom. Whether it's in online like or in person, the mute button is fantastic. So if you have a little section of the video that you want to show, press the mute button and all of a sudden you have a silent film. And you can make a silent film soundtrack to that. You can use the objects that you just made, you could use your voice, or you could use your instruments. Like I do actually have my instrument out here. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to have, uh, you know, band specialists or not, though. So I'm going to show you an example, and then I'd like us to actually do this together. Super fun. Uh, let's see. Back to sharing. Not that one. So this is from a project called Peace of Mind. And it's a project that really focuses on people who are experiencing Parkinson's disease and dementia and pairing it with artists, I'm, I'm one of them, and neuroscientists. Uh, this is a video that we made. Oops, stop. This is a video that we made that in this case, it's kind of a demonstration of um, how a day, an entire cycle of someone's day feels like when you have Parkinson's disease. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this with our sound off. What I want you to do is imagine what kind of soundtrack you would make to this particular little kind of finger character. Once we're done that, we're going to do it again. And I'm going to ask everybody to open up your mics and contribute to the soundtrack yourself. So that could be with the object that you have. It could be with your voice. I'll be pretty active with it just to make sure that we've got, you know, lots of sound going on. But the first step is really just listen to it with the sound off. So it's about two minutes long.
Okay, so it's a pretty sweet movie, eh? It's really quite a lovely indication. I, I didn't know anything about Parkinson's disease before I started, uh, before I became part of this project. And um, I think it's a really lovely way to share with people, to actually make art together to better understand each other's experiences. So I'd like everybody to unmute yourself. And I'm going to lead you through a couple little exercises first before we do the soundtrack. Great, awesome. Thank you for, for unmuting yourself. So first thing I want you to do is just take a, like sit up kind of nice and, and straight because it's hard to make sound when you're all clenched up. I just want everybody to take a nice deep sigh. Awesome. And I want you to make that sigh a little bit more vocal. <sighs> little hand, he's just waking up, right? Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to just do a nice big yawn. <sighs> awesome, great. Now I want you to make whatever sound it is that you make when you first wake up in the morning. Just something that feels really good, like, mm. 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 Awesome. Okay. So you can use words if you want. You can use just sounds like what we just did if you want. Um, you can use your little object that you use to make sound if you want. So I'm going to play that little movie again. And this time we get to contribute whatever we want to to this soundtrack. Um, just one thing is like you can contribute a lot, but I also want you to listen and respond to what other people are doing. So if you hear somebody going, hmm, you might go, hmm, yep. Yeah. In response. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. And let's hope the replay works. Oh, that's not playing the right mm -hmm. video. I really I don't care about wake up <laughs> on the tree again. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I think when I got mature skin, I just want the uh, skin that I have. Um, sorry, give me a second here. <laughs> Always little technical bloopers, right? So now you get to see we have all kinds of instructional videos online. It wouldn't be an online presentation without at least one little hitch, Louise. That's true. So this you were batting a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> this gives me a chance to show you actually the online hub. So each one of these little boxes is a, is a project that you can look at. You can see that Jermaine uh, has lots of projects up here. The pros and cons program is up there as well too. There's activities you can do outside, social distancing. Um, with objects you have from your home, from your kitchen cabinet. Um, I really love Matter at Your Fingertips. It's a Play-Doh score that kids love doing. I totally suggest that you have a look at that one. As well as for more instrumental things, if you want to get people learning how to improvise, then Catalyst Music is really excellent. Um, she's put instructional videos with uh, soundtracks that you can play along with. Really, really excellent. So have a look. As you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff there. That looks amazing. Really well laid out. Um, yeah, we worked hard. I'm on also going to say um, this is kind of our five minute, we can stretch it to 10 kind of uh, warning. Okay. Time flies. He does it ever. So, all right. So let's do our, our musical soundtrack together. So sorry for that little technical interruption. <laughs> um, but I think that you understand the idea. We're just making the soundtrack of what this little character is, is experiencing. So just for fun, to make me sure that I know that you're there, I want everybody to just take another kind of like sigh again. Mm. 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 Good, you are there. That's so good to know. <laughs> okay, here we go.
Juan. That was lovely, everybody. Bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> it's super fun. And the kids love doing this. I think it's fantastic for elementary and high school. So with that, I think that's all really the time that we have in order to really get into doing stuff. I'd love for, if you have any questions or any feedback um, to hear what you have to say. Um, let me know. Yeah, thank you so much, Louise. I really had no idea what to expect, even though I have uh, uh, quite an extensive background in music. I've done nothing online with it. And this was really, really interesting. Um, so thank you so much. And we have that shared doc and there's a lot of information that Louise already has in there that is really helpful, all sorts of links. Um, so definitely check that out. And the link to that is in Sketch as well. Um, and just a little reminder about uh, what's oh, Kumo space. We tried it last night as we were prepping for um, today. And it is a really neat space to go hang out in. Um, you get to le learn this new kind of technology. It's very intuitive, but it's nice. And you go meet there and you can go and chat with different people. And it's very welcoming. And um, so we want people to try that out. And then tomorrow, make sure you come to the demo slam at the end of the day. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, Louise, thank you so much for preparing us and for joining us. And thank you everybody for being here. I loved that. Pleasure. Absolutely. And just to say, yes, the, the hub um, resource is in the link in the document that I put on there. Please do, have, do go have a look. Um, I decided to go with very um, not traditional instruments today just because um, I was hearing that most people were, were generalists, but there are definitely things that you can do with the instruments like this or guitar or whatever other instruments you actually are using. Um, and I would definitely go have a look at the link that I just put in the chat because that is one of the best ways that I know of to have people actually play and be creative with instruments online. So there's a really excellent kind of like way of, of working that is basically having one person who conducts like with their hands and then another person playing what that person conducts. So if you have any questions, I'd be really happy to connect with you um, outside of this space, outside of this conference or later today. Um, don't hesitate to reach out and, uh, and start, a, uh, start a conversation. Wonderful, thank you. And hope to see all of you at some more sessions later. For sure, thanks to everybody for coming. Thank you, Louise. Oh, that was really you. helpful. Ah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> really awesome. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. Well, it's great to see you're a clarinetist. I'm actually an oboist. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really curious to look at some of those resources for doing more instrumental things and vocal things online. There's a lot of choral stuff on there, a ton. Right on. Oh. Yeah, no 
there's really some phenomenal stuff. Uh, if you're interested in the choral things, check out can, uh, Songs That Connect Us. Okay. Is that link in there or should I write it down? Uh, it's in the, here, I'll just give you to the link to the project page. And then try songs that connect us. And then there's another one called uh, Choral Improv that's super cool. And then for more, more instrumental stuff, check out the Give Us a Hand one that's super cool. And then Catalyst's Music. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, what else would be good? There's also digital stuff too. Um, actually, Words and Rhythm could be fun as well. That's more, um, you know, based on kind of not so much singing, singing stuff. So like if you have hesitant singers, then mm -hmm. it's more spoken, mm -hmm. and like kind of loop based. That's really yeah. awesome. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is really exciting. Yeah. Cool. Good. Awesome. Well, you I for, you know, jumping in there when I was asking for some feedback. Oh, yeah, no problem. I am always surprised by teachers not putting on their cameras. <laughs> but... You know what? It the, the the teacher training kind of stuff it's almost always a blank screen oh so funny I think it's just because they're they're like on screen too much already like yeah yeah I get it Ugh. yes it's just always so nice to see people when you're presenting sure. um but that was a nice group and a great session um and I'm gonna pop out and open my next one so I can get my next presenter ready to go. So really, really nice to meet you, Louise. Thanks so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks so much. It's great to meet you as well, too. Okay, take care. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.